This has to be one of the most popular e-learning titles that we have launched, the e-learning of business portraits. And within there, we have a topic which many of you write to me about. How do I set up my new studio? And hence, extracted from the e-learning of business portrait, enjoy today's lesson. Everybody, welcome to my studio. This is where I've been working for the past 15 years. This is my second or third studio setup. And it's not a huge studio. It's actually two part. And I'll use this as a reference of what you should be investing or buying when you start yourself a studio. Let's go through the core basics. So everything that I introduce to you in this part of the lesson will be indicated as necessary or optional. The first one, a computer. It's good to have one in the studio so that you can do references and also quick, spontaneous edits in front of your clients. And a LCD panel. We've got a lot of this. In fact, I'm just showing you what you might need to have. It's good to have it tethered to your camera so whenever you shoot, your clients can see. But bear in mind not to be tethered the whole time because then your subjects will be posing and not looking at the camera but keep on stealing glances at what you shot and the eye line can be a mess. So have an LCD panel and let me show you what's interesting about this one. We've got a wireless HDMI tethered to our camera so you have one dongle on our camera and this one goes to the LCD panel. And apart from that, we always have additional HDMI cables that can allow us to connect to the computer and also to our camera so that you can do live view. More on that later when we shoot. Now let's move on to the lights, the workhorse. This is my workhorse. It has been around for at least 10 years. I've used this light for at least 10 years, probably the fourth generation of lights that I've purchased. Mono blocks, that means it is connected to the wall power. There's no built-in battery. Yes, I am that old, where we don't have batteries connected to the flash like what you do. So if you go out and buy yourself a flash, a studio flash now, you should get one that has built-in portable battery like this. These are the models that would be good for you to invest in. This is a 600 watt per second and it has an optical slave which is indicated by this button here, slave. Let me go through with you what this is. This is the on button which typically you have when you have a studio monoblock. This is where you control the power, how much of power. It goes from zero minimal power right up to 10. And then you have the test the alarm is a sound that beeps to let you know that the condenser inside the flash is fully charged. And then when you turn on the slave here, you have an optical trigger. The sensor here would know every time your camera's flash goes off, it sees it and then it fires the flash instantaneously. And it's got a fuse, always get a flash that has a fuse. Well, we hacked ours so that we don't have to have a fuse. I'll tell you why we do that. And the second fuse that comes from the power, this is the power cable. And you notice that it has this switch here, which is the modeling light. So you can go full power, half power or off, so that you can study the shadow. Because studio lights are so instantaneous, you need to know where the highlights will form and the shadow will form, and you need the modeling light to do that. But after a while, once you get a hang of it, you don't need modeling light. And connected to the sync port, is our Godox trigger. It's a wireless trigger. Now, this is one of the best model you can buy. It's affordable. It's an X1 2.4 gigahertz trigger. So N indicates that it can be mounted to a Nikon flash or Nikon camera. And this R here means it's a receiver. So when you turn this on, you can set it to channel and also group. Now, the flash is not connected to a power. So we have six of this, but I'm just showing you two. You typically need two, main light, 
and the second one is a field light same 600 watt per second same trigger same setup only that the first flash that I showed you we have an octa it's a modifier and this one we have a soft box so both of these are typically used in almost every one of our business shoot one gives an elongated lighting one gives an elongated light source the other one acts as a very good light everything octa field light so that you don't get so much of shadow and hot shoe flashes we have about eight of this the favorite brand that you can get under the model would be the godox tt685 it's really affordable c stands for canon s stands for sony and n stands for nikon so if you use a nikon camera go get the n series and what's interesting about this flash this particular model is that you have a lot of modes it goes from manual where you need to set the power and then you have multiple flashes ETTL that means you can mount it on your camera and produce TTL flash and if you keep on pressing this it's a cycle now apart from that it has built in sensors as well optical sensors just like the studio light if it detects a light going off it will fire but the sad thing is it's at the front so it's hard for the photographer to trigger it sometimes and because of that the interesting thing is this particular model comes with radio trigger which means that you can actually buy a godox trigger mounted on your camera and it will trigger this flash so all you need to do is set the group and the channel which we'll show you how to do that later so we have a lot of this flash let me show you so we have about six or eight of this as you can see it's here in the tray so we got a tt685 same model but for sony and we have one for canon one for nikon two for nikon and also the old legacy nikon flashes and we put numbers to them so how many would you need well you need at least two two of these hot shoe flashes and two studio lights if you're investing but if you don't have that budget simple at least have one studio light and one hot shoe flash the tt865 is a good buy it's affordable and it has a lot of modes and a lot of triggering method and since i'm here the must have tool that we need when we do a shoot a trolley that you can push around like this in the studio so on the first tray i have the lenses a 50 millimeter we have filters we have backup sd cards we also have batteries and typically the assistant would put two cameras for us you have no time to run to the dry cabinet and grab another camera in the event that sometimes you run out of battery or the camera jams so we've got a full frame and a non full frame typically i like to use the nikon in the studio it doesn't matter that's because i kind of grew up with studio shoots in the nikon so we maintain three systems we have the sony camera the alpha series the canon cameras as well and the nikon camera treat cameras like shoes you have sneakers for your exercises and then you have shoes that you wear to work the leather shoes and then you have shoes that you go hiking they all serve different purposes so how do we use our camera the nikon for product shoot because the color i find them more accurate you may not believe that but it's fine you can use any camera that you want that's for our studio shoot and then when it comes to natural lighting outdoor shoots example if you need to do outdoor portraits for your subjects try a canon they're very faithful in the outdoor colors and then when it comes to videos we use the sony so gone are the days where photographers say i'm a nikon photographer no you should adopt as many brands as needed and then we have the standard stuff that we have in the tray tissue papers and napkins so that if the subject sweat they can actually wipe their sweat and a whole bag of receivers of godox triggers we've got the pnc cables more triggers this is a t t is a transmitter this is a receiver so what we do is that we tie a string to this we hang it to the light stand and this pnc cable would be connected to the sync port of the flash so we have about 
six of these, six pairs of this. And because we use multiple brand of cameras, you just have to buy each model, I guess. Well, you don't need to buy that many triggers. That's us, accumulated over the years. So if you have one studio flash, try to get one that has a built-in transmitter. That way, you don't need to buy the transmitter. And then if you're talking about the TT685, it comes in with the transmitter. That saves you a lot of money. All you need to do is buy the X1 trigger that is connected to your camera. And when you have a radio trigger like this, the distance is amazing and you don't need line of sight. You can set the power and the channel and group the flashes together. We'll learn more about this. Let's move on to the next part of your setup. Light stands, you need a lot of this. In fact, we have like at least close to 20 light stands, but you don't need that many. Two or three will be sufficient. And don't forget to get this stuff. These are called swivels. It allows you to put it on the light stand. That's where you secure it to the light stand. And there's a knob here that allows you to swivel so that if you mount a hot shoe flash, you can swivel it. And I know, Godox makes the AD200. These are good flashes. I love them. If ever this flash dies, I'll probably invest in a few AD200. So here's the thing. Don't buy all as hot chew flash because the AD200 comes built in battery and it's more powerful and you can attach more adapters to it. And don't forget, Godox is not sponsoring me in any way. The reason I'm telling you because it's one of the most reliable, affordable and easily adaptable flash system there is with so many features. Now, the reason why we buy a hot shoe flash is that we can always still remove this and mount it on your camera and do TTL and get quick and dirty shots. We do that a lot. The producers do this a lot as reference shots. Now, you need at least two with swivels. Now, when it comes to light stand, they should be typically about one head higher than the standard height of your subject. In this case, this is a six feet light stand. Light should always go down. Never get a light stand that is too short. So if it's anything less than six feet, don't waste your time. However, they don't make light stands like how they used to. All these plastic components would wear this lock. So as you can see, this is already loose. So don't be too sad if your light stands die on you. This, I treat them as consumables. Every two years, you may need to buy a new set. And don't forget, when you shoot outdoor, they get rain, they rust. And reflectors, very simple. You need reflectors so that it saves light and we have two of these. So the reason why we have two of these is because that we have a green screen studio. So if you look around, we've got the green screen portion, which consumes up to 10 feet. We do a lot of green screen shot. And if you turn around, you notice that we have a white screen studio as well. Apart from that, we should talk about the choices of backdrops. We only have two backdrops. The reason is because that we already have a green screen. We can obtain any kind of background that we want. So the backdrop that we have here is a black backdrop. You're probably shocked that my backdrop looks like it went to war. It had. So the front part of the backdrop, when you lower it, You notice that it's not clean. It's got footstep prints all over it. It's usual because your subject is supposed to come in and stand on it. And that's why I use paper backdrop. Once this gets so bad, I'll just take a blade and slice this off and pull this off. So a backdrop like this, a whole roll like this, costed me about 250 ringgit. It's really affordable paper and we change one every year or year and a half because you can touch this mess up in photoshop so we only slice this off and pull out a new section every two or three shots and then we have the second one if you ever need to buy a backdrop always get a gray if you ever buy only one backdrop get a gray not a white one the reason is that when you hit enough of light to a grey backdrop, it becomes white. 
And if you don't hit it with light, it becomes black. So a grey backdrop is a mask. And especially when it comes to business shot. So as you can see, it's the same thing as well. And this is quite interesting because from the previous shoot, the T mark is still there. T stands for talent. And this is where your subject should stand. And that will know that, you know, I've got clients coming in not knowing and then they stand this way. So that's going to be awkward. So indicate in front, where the front is. And you notice that we always have a bar stool here. I always never start my shot with the subject standing up. We'll talk more about this, that you should do this. So start by sitting down. I'm here, best kept secret. Behind that reflector. You notice there is another studio light. It's a 200 watt per second studio light with a beauty dish and a honeycomb mounted to it. And we have two of these at the corner of the studio. There's another one on the left hand side. The reason I have these two lights is that I will always get beautiful rim light. Especially when I have the backdrop down. With the honeycomb and the beauty dish, it will produce a very fine rim light that will not spray light when I shoot from this angle. Shoot tray, equipment for shooting, and then we have tray, another one here. It's good to be organized. Light meter, production note and client's brief on a clipboard. Oh, lightest cheat sheet. It's a very useful formula that I devised that teaches photographers to know how much of power to set on the flash at what distance and what F value they get. It's beyond the scope of this course to teach you lighters teach it, but you can learn about it in this course called the Advanced Flash Photography. I hope you subscribe to it. This is one of the best things that ever helped me in the studio. And apart from that, we have a lot of these framing cards which I use to know at what distance, what framing to put. It's kind of like doing this without doing this because I have to put my hand down. So I will know how to frame this for the subject. And we have a lot of flex here that we use to cover the flesh if they ever flare. And if you go down one section, you notice that we have all the umbrellas, the reverse umbrella, the direct studio umbrella, we've got the silver one, we've got the matte ones, additional very long cable. You need very long cables so that you don't need to have power socket like this running across the studio. That is a tripping hazard. So if you have long cables like this, you can head on to your online shopping mall and buy them. Portfolio bag. I know, you haven't seen this for a long time. What they used to do with portfolio bag is that you take photos, a reference of the work that you've done, you put them in this bag and then you carry it to an advertiser's office and show them the work that you have done. You need a bag. There were no tablets or smartphone back then. But we have tablets and smartphone now and it's very easy to share your work and references of your work. I use them to store mounting boards like this, black on one side and white on one side. So I have a lot of this here. And this is a tidy way to keep your Flex. So our portfolio bag now is our flag bag. So every time there's a shoot, we will bring this out and lean it on the tray so you can use this flag effectively to bounce light or cut light. So in summary, this is what you would typically need if you're setting up a studio. You probably noticed that I have got this table here, very near where we should. You need this because you do not want your subjects to have bulgy pens with their car keys, wallets and their smartphone. So it's always good to encourage them to put it here so that when they are sitting here performing the shoot by you, they can still keep an eye on their belongings. Now that's it. Apple boxes. Very much needed so that your subject can stand on them and be elevated or you can sit on them on days that you have to do a lot of shots. Apple Box can be hard to find because it's pretty much a studio and filming crew equipment. So you may even need to customize them. You can go on to your shopping mall like Ikea. I bought this in Ikea. A stool. Works pretty well as well. I'm short like that. And this is where I do my shoot for grey black and green setup 
And if I turn over, I have another stool, another setup with a white, pure white background. So I call this a dual setup. You can easily turn over. So if you set up your studio lights, you'll be very economical in terms of movement. If you like what you learn today, you should head on to this link here and check out our e-learning of business portraits because after all, one of the best income in photography is to shoot portraits and one of the best income of shooting portraits is business portraits. And don't forget, check out our All Access as well where you have full access to all our e-learning. So grab this All Access account now because after this date, you will not get access to the All Access account anymore. And I'll see you in the next video.